Hello, everybody. Good evening. Thank you very much for being with us for this webinar. I think it is definitely something special. We usually talk about business a lot. We have now something much more culinary, much more delightful in parallel to business. So tonight's or uh, this evening's uh, seminar or webinar rather is definitely going to be something we can all learn from. Mr. Matsuda has studied the Swiss wine scenery and um, regions quite deeply. So let me introduce Mr. Matsuda to you. Mr. Toshi Matsuda, uh, Toshi Matsuda was born and raised in the Chokamachi Kanazawa, a famous town with rich tradition and culture and not to forget great food. Mr. Matsuda moved to Tokyo with his, for his higher education, got married, and has two grown-up daughters. Before joining the Swiss Business Hub at the Swiss Embassy, he worked at the Dutch Embassy for promoting the Netherlands for direct investment. The skills he learned there definitely helped him also for his job at the Swiss Business Hub here, which he joined in 2012. Actually, it is a particular, uh, particular pleasure for me to state that because 10 years before him, I did that very job at the Embassy myself. Now, when it comes to wine, I'm sure that Mr. Matsuba, Matsuda could not learn very much about wines at the Dutch Embassy. I think even the Brits are beating the Dutch on that. Switzerland, on the other hand, is an exciting place for studying wines as they are not from the flat beaten path, but are unique and diverse, as is Switzerland's landscape. With a certificate in hand from the Japan Sommelier Association and the British WSET, it did not take long for Matsuda-san to become fascinated with the wines produced in Switzerland. He has since then organized many gatherings where he introduced with delight to our wines to Japanese wine lovers. So without exaggeration, Matsuda-san is a much appreciated wine ambassador for our beloved Swiss wines. With this, I would like to pass the virtual floor to Matsuda-san. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, Andresan. And good evening, everybody. Thanks very much for joining today. Uh, my name is Toshi Matsuda, and I'm working for the Swiss Business Hub in the uh, Embassy of Switzerland in Japan. I'm very honored to be here to tell you how wonderful the Swiss one is. As Andresan introduced, I was not a serious drinker <laughs> of wine before I joined the Swiss Embassy. But I, after I joined the Swiss Embassy, I you know, definitely started to, to study seriously and the Swiss wine fascinated me very much. And uh, today I will tell you how fascinating the Swiss one is. Let me share the file with you. So when I talk about the Swiss wine, I always start from, from this um, scenery. In the famous gastronomic publication written by uh, Buria Savarin called uh, Physiologie du Goût, he described the Swiss wine as uh, alpine the pure spring, spring water. I found a quotation from a book written by Swiss wine expert. This is Vampo Inoue. I think this expression is uh, very impressive to me. And it's exactly the right descri description about the Swiss wine. Some people say that the uh, Swiss wine is a little bit thin and weak. But even some, you know, sommelier says the same thing. But I think it's totally wrong. There used to be a big, you know, boom of the big wine, big and bold wine. But Swiss wine is totally opposite from it. It is very delicate, but really elegant and has flavor intensity and very long after flavor. If you compare the high quality Swiss wine with the uh, mass produced cheap ones, you will easily notice that the big difference 
Swiss wine is pure with a very deep flavor. So today I will introduce those fascinating Swiss wine from now. This gentleman is, is uh, Mr. Paolo Basso. He's chosen as the uh, best sommelier in the world in 2013. The contest was held in Japan, Tokyo. Now he's lived in Ticino, southern part of uh, Switzerland, uh, Italian border of Switzerland, and now acting as the uh, ambassador of Swiss wine. He's promoting Swiss wine also worldwide. So why Swiss wine is, is, is not uh, you know, popular now? There are three reasons. First one is a small production. Vineyard surface is uh, you know, 20 years worldwide. And the production amount is the uh, 23rd globally. That's between uh, um, Georgia and uh, Ukraine, I think. But the amount of you know, consumption is it, huge in Switzerland. Swiss people love drinking wines. So they drink uh, 33 liters per, per person per year. That's the uh, fourth in the world. So uh, um, Swiss, domestic Swiss wine production is 100 million liter. And this uh, 33 liter per capita means that 20, 260 million liter per, per year in Switzerland. So there's a huge gap. So 160 million liters, they are they importing. So that's why uh, you know export of Swiss wine is only two percent of to, 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 total production. It's very difficult to 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 you know to buy it outside Switzerland. Also. Uh, um, Cost of the production is it's uh, it's it's high. Mostly, um, Swiss vineyard is located in uh, in a in a steep. So usually it's it's a it's a flat land. It's very easy to use machines like tractors or harvest machines. But in Switzerland, as I said, the most uh, you know vineyards are located in the, in in the steeps. So. It's very difficult to use machines. That's why uh, you know vineyard owners hire people and uh, do uh, you know do the work. So that costs a lot. That reflect the price. That's also make a uh, you know uh, difficult to export of Swiss Swiss wine. So I would like to explain a little bit about the history. Um, the first, uh, the Roman invasion, like like other part of Europe, um, brought uh, you know wine making to Switzerland. It's about uh, you know before BC one hundred, and firstly spread in the valley. It's it's an Italian border, and the winemaking is spread to the other parts. There are some pips are found in the uh, old ancient uh, um, house, houses in the Neuchâtel about 3,000 years ago, but there is no proof that they, they actually uh, fermented the wine you know, from grapes left over. And the second, uh, you know, Cistercian monks also played a very important role for the winemaking in Switzerland. Cistercian monks is very famous for, for the, uh, you know, starting the Burgundian wines. The, they are very serious about making wine. And, it, and in the medieval years, they already know how excellent the vineyard is in the, in the vineyard of Desale, is how, how excellent it is. So that makes the, the basic of the uh, you know wine making in Switzerland, and also the appearance of uh, various pests and the disease 
also change the, the, uh, uh, the wine making, especially the phylloxera, which is a famous uh, um, it's, it's an insect eating, uh, eating a root that ruined the uh, you know, vine trees. So because of the, the, the insect, uh, the most, almost all the vineyard is collapsed in uh, 19th, late 19th century. And especially as an influence for the uh, Canton Ticino, again, the southern part of the uh, Switzerland, they uprooted the, all the, you know, the existing uh, vines replaced by Melo, which is the, uh, you know, famous for Bordeaux. But now in Ticino, they make red, white, rosé, even the sparkling from the uh, Melo. So those three factors changed or started the Swiss winemaking. Um, this is this example of the, you know, because of the phylloxera, the disease, all the, uh, you know, vine trees worldwide now have the American root stick grafted by the uh, French vines. These are, American root, root stock, stock have the uh, resistant to, to the insect. So now, you know, almost all vine trees around the world have this, this kind of grafting system. Okay, so now um, let's see the uh, winemaking region in Switzerland. Biggest production area is here, also the Italian border called the Valle, followed by um, Canton Bo. Canton is equivalent, it's, it's, a, it's a prefecture in Japan and a state in the state, uh, United States. Followed by um, um, German-speaking part, it's, it's, it's a wide range part. And then Geneva, and Ticino, Italian border, and this three lakes area. There are, you know, three lakes here, and along the lakes, there are, the, you know, vineyards. So this is the percentage of the uh, you know, production rate in Switzerland. As I mentioned, Valley, Bo, German skip speaking part, Geneva, Ticino, and Three Lakes. This is the percentage of the uh, grape variety. Until recently, Shasla was the uh, most popular major grape, but recently, Sapas by the uh, Pinot Noir, which is a global trend. People in the world, are, you know, started to like a Pinot Noir a lot, and other region also up, up, uh, changed the the vine um, to Pinot Noir. The trend is same in Switzerland. But the special point in Switzerland is Game is also popular in Switzerland. This is a uh, this is the Beaujolais, you know, original grape. And also Mello is popular in Switzerland. So I would like to explain the, each wine regions from now. First, the Canton Valley. As I explained, it is located here. It is valley means it's surrounded by the mountains. So this is a uh, Lake Geneva, Lac Lema, and along the uh, um, Rhone River. Here, in the mostly in the south bank of the Rhone River, the vineyard is spread. So as mentioned that the, uh, it's, it's surrounded by, by the mountains, it has the vineyard 
highest altitude in Europe, which is 1,100 meters. And because of the surrounding of the mountains, it has a very long, longest amount hour of sunshine. In 2,100 hours approximately. And very small amount of the rain, 800 millimeters. That's the uh, two third of a bodo. Irrigations by water from the Alps. So those, uh, you know, climate make, you know, wine in, uh, in Valley make very intense and very strong flavor. And one unique point of the, you uh, know, Valley has the, uh, there are lots of lots of in indigenous grapes and the crossing grapes and some international grapes recently. Indigenous is uh, it's a local original grapes. In uh, white grapes, Shasla is the most popular. Shasla is called the fandang in, in Valley. And these indigenous grapes like Alva, Amin, Race, Umani Blanche, those, those indigenous grapes are very popular, still popular in, in Valley. In red wine, Shiva, Aida, um, oh, this one is white, sorry, this is a white wine. Sabanian Blanc is white wine. But red, the Konala, uh, Rouge de Pay, and Umani Blanche, Umani Rouge, Konala in Italy. So, this this konala is called uh, you know konala in, in, in valley, but in Italy, especially in the in the Valle d'Aosta, is a no, northern part of the uh, you know Italy. They call the uh, um, this umani blanche and the konala, but in in, in valley konala. Is, is a different, so same name, but a different, different grape variety. In, in, in it's, it's very located close to each other, but it's, it's a different names. And interestingly, in Shiha, this is a very famous uh, grape variety in, uh, you know, in the Rhone region in France. So the origin of the Rhone River is from Valley and all the way down the river, all the way down to the South France. But still the you know, Siha is the number one popular wine in, in that region. So the you know, ancient, ancient years, the river is only way of the, uh, you know, the traffic. So everything is connected. So even though it, it's, it's a far away apart, but still the you know, culture, is connected. So those other interesting grape variety is a Gamare, a Garanoa. This is the uh, created in the research center in Switzerland. Federal Research Center in Shanja. They are very famous for the, uh, you know, up, uh, updated or making a cross of the new variety. So those, those uh, varieties like Gamare, Garanoa, is the uh, cross of the Game and the Reichensteiner is created in this research center. The Orinoa is also the cross, it's made in this research center. Also in the uh, winemaking method, um, but they have an interesting uh, method. They call it a dole. This is a mixture of a blend of the uh, Pinot Noir and Gamay. As you notice, uh, you know, Pinot Noir and Gamay is a uh, you know, famous uh, Burgundian grape variety. As far as I know, in, in, Burgundian, in, in Burgundy, they don't blend the Pinot Noir and the Gamay. So this is a special specialty in, in Switzerland.
uh, yes, this is the you know Rhone River. It's it's, it's a Rhone, Southern Rhone, like Chateau Neuf de Pape, Marseille, and all the way up in the Lyon and you know close to the Bourgogne, and then like Lema, Jeune, uh, Le Manco, and then Valley is here, and this is the origin of the uh, you know Rhone River. I mentioned the uh, you know vineyard in in valley is located the very high you know mountains. This is the example. I feel like it's a Japanese a Tanada. <laughs> it it seems like a Japanese Tanada. So as you see, it's very difficult uh, you know mechanization in these uh, vineyard. This is my my favorite wine in this region. Petit Alvan, this is the indigenous rare variety in this region by Jean Rene, Jean Rene Germanier. So this winery is located in Vetro, commune Vetro, Vetoromura. And 19.8% of the uh, you know, Petit Alvan is produced in, in this village, Vetro. It is very unique wine. It has from dry, off dry, medium dry, and sweet wine. But it's not, you know, sticky sweet. It's very elegant, you know, sweet wine. So it's very good with the with food. It has a taste like a you know white flower, and red apple, the peach, and hint of honey. I really, you know, it's it's very frustrating for me. You know, I, I cannot show you that I cannot, you know, have opportunity to 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 taste you actually. But uh, one of the most famous uh, um, wine journalists, Hugh Johnson, say uh, this wine is worth drinking. So this wonderful wine, it can, it can be purchased in Japan. Sugiyama Trading is importing this wine. So uh, um, SCCIJ will be uh, sending you the list of the importer. So please, uh, if you're interested, please access to, to and, and buy the, you know, th this wonderful wine. This is Mr. Jean-Rene Germanier. And this is the commune of Betro. Yeah, this is the place. This is the place of the Betro, the location of Jean-Rene Germanier. The Valley Sion is also capital of Valley. It's a beautiful place. You can see the castle from, from, the, from the stations. It's beautiful. Is this winter time? Winter time is, is severe, but you know, scene is also very beautiful. Okay, so second uh, the region, Canto de Vaux. Bo is located in uh, along the uh, Lac Lema, Lemanco, Lake Geneva. So there are four regions in this canton. One is La Côte, is uh, west of the Lausanne, west, west part the west of Lausanne, and um, the influence of Lake Geneva is, is, is a lot, and they give the wine uh, very gentle in the level, and with a steep slope, and that make a very, you know, very uh, intense sunshine, makes influence to, to, the, to the wines. The third one is Chablais. It's a little bit uh, in, inland, so less, uh, you know, water influence also give the another influence to the wine. 
And third one is north, north of Bo. It's this part. This is La Côte, La Vaux, the Chablais, and this is the north, northern part of Bo. So this one is a wine making is a similar to the wine is near these three lakes area. So I will explain later on. So first La Côte, as I mentioned, this area. This area is, this is a capital city to Lausanne. So about the 50 kilometers from Lausanne. And as you see, uh, it's not a steep, it's a less steep slope. So it has a, you know, um, gentle influence of the, uh, uh, from, from the lake. So that make, uh, you know, elegant and delicate and very gentle influence wine. This is my favorite wine from La Côte. La Colombe Chasla by Raymond Paco. It is based in the Fessy around here. So as I mentioned, the, uh, you know, er, uh, wine in this area is very delicate, elegant, gentle with the flower of jasmine. It is really, really, you know, crisp in a typical wine of La Côte. And he also make the wine with the uh, biodynamic method. That is a uh, no chemical, no fertilizer, no pesticide. It's a very natural way of wine making. So these are family. Now the daughter Laura is uh, taking over his, his father. Now she's making the wine. So you can purchase this beautiful wine in the Kishimoto Trading in Osaka. So please access to the website. They, they line up uh, other interesting and beautiful wines from Raymond Paco. So please, uh, please visit the website. So this is their, their, their vineyard. The second one is Lavo. Maybe you have heard of the, uh, you know, Lavo. And this is the famous and elegant and intense wine place generated by three sons. In this region, it's, as you see, it's very, it's a located, vineyard is located, it's a very steep slope. And there are three sons in, in this region, they say. One is obviously true sun, <laughs> reflecting, I mean, uh, you know, shining. The second one is the sun reflecting by, 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 the, uh, by the lake. And third one is this stone wall. So this stone wall absorbs the, the heat daytime and dispatch the, uh, you know, in the nighttime to make the, uh, you know, vineyard warm. So because of the, these, these matters, the wine in Lavo has elegant, but very intense flavor. We have about 10 minutes left for the presentation. I have a lot, lot, lot more to say. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the most famous, uh, you know, winemaker in, in Lavo. Monsieur uh, Louis Bobard, and he's like a pioneer of uh, modern wine making in this region, and he's also a teacher of the uh, wine making in this region. So uh, he's like uh, you know Andy Jaye in, in Bourgogne. So he's a pioneer and he's, he's like a leader of the wine making in this region. So you use the uh, you know grapes on, only from Desalé which is a Grand Cru, and the taste is um, structured and rich with honeysuckle and a hint of honey 
and very complex. This wine is purchased, can be purchased in the crab corn shells. So please access the website. You know, so when, when you when you discuss with the Swiss wine, it's always associated with the uh, you know beautiful scenery. So this is the level. This is a beautiful scenery level. This is the vineyard of Desale. The premier crew, uh, Grand Cru vineyard. Only the two Grand Cru vineyard in Canton de Vaud. This is one of them. He's, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Louis Philippe Bova. He's the uh, pioneer and also a great teacher of this region. The third one is Chablais, it's inland. Inland of the Canton de Vaud. In this region. So, uh, it's obviously less, uh, you know, lake influence and less water influence. So the temperature difference between daytime, nighttime and wider. And, uh, because of the, uh, the sunshine, is, is, it has a lot of sunshine, less, less rain, so very intense. Um, that makes the wine a very intense flavor with a robust flavor, Shasla, in this region. Okay, so German speaking part, it's wide ranges part. It's a 20, uh, 17 German speaking cantons. These areas, it's a Jama speaking area. So dominant variety is a, is a Pinot Noir. But in, in locally, they call it Pinot Noir as a Blauburgunder, Blauburgunder, which is a German name of a Pinot Noir. This is uh, in the dominant gray, uh, black grape variety. And the white one is a Mura Turgal. This is the um, developed in Switzerland. Uh, Dr. Muller of Switzerland, uh, living in Turgal in Switzerland, make uh, this, this grape variety from Riesling and Madere Royale. So this one is not only popular in Switzerland, but also, uh, you know, Germany, Austria, and this German speaking part. It is a harsh winter, but it's mild uh, summer and, uh, and, uh, and autumn. So that makes wine in, in, um, grow very nicely because of the influence of river and the lakes. This is my favorite wine in this region, Aspermon by Binigma. Main grape, grape variety is Pinot Noir, but uh, this gentleman, Mr. Valentin, is, 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 is a, it's like a revolutionary winemaker. Within uh, you know, Pinot Noir grape, he put the crushed gamma ray, crushed and half squeezed gamma ray and ferment together, mas macerate together. So that, the gamma ray gives the wine and the power and body. And Pinot Noir is, as you know, a very elegant wine. So that makes the wines, it's a very good balance with the elegance and the powerful. This wine um, won the prizes in three contests. Wine Challenge in Japan, Wine International Wine Challenge, and also in Switzerland. This wine can be done, can, can be purchased through the Helvetica in Japanese importer. Please access to this web website. This is not winery, but this is the Northern Grison near the uh, you know, vineyard of the Aspermo this wine. So for me, this is a typical scene of a, you know, Swiss countryside. It always re reminds me of the, uh, you know, like a 
cartoon Heidi, Arabs no Shoujo Heiji. So this area is a very typical area of the for Japanese image of the uh, of the Switzerland. I really love the scenery and the beautiful. Okay, so the next one is Geneva. Geneva is a very small area, as mentioned that the, uh, it's here, surrounded, surrounded by France. But the amount of wine making the third in Switzerland, so high density, you know, the vineyard high density, dense, and uh, it has a very unique variety and modern wine making technique. As mentioned, the vineyard is densely in the small cantons, and Game is the most dominant grape variety in 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 this canton, followed, sorry, followed by uh, I think Chasla, followed by Chasla and uh, very classic and international variety also very successful such as Chardonnay, Arigote, Pinot Noir is also growing. So those kind of French uh, grape variety is becoming very popular in this region. And again it's, 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 it's very you know mild influence of the uh, you know Lake Geneva and mild moderate climate and the limestone soil uh, is from Juha Mountains that make a uh, um, very elegant wine. This is my favorite wine in Geneva. This is Arigote, produced by Le uh, Perrier. And this is really fresh and crispy, but it has very hazelnut flavor that gives a very complexity and full body, but it, it's, it's, it's elegance. That's the terroir or Geneva. And this vineyard also make, uh, you know, varietal wines like, like Sauvignon Blanc, the Chardonnay, Pinot Gris, Gamay. So uh, yes, if you have a chance, please, uh, let, please try the wine. So, you know, Geneva is also a very beautiful city. This is a Jado, there's a big, huge fountain. This is a Cathedral Saint Pierre. Um, Calvin started to, you know, the, how do you say, uh, change the Christianity, uh, you know, against the Catholic. So this is Ticino. As I mentioned, that this is the Italian border city, uh, uh, cantons, and uh, it has a Mediterranean climate influence. The long sunshine hour and the high temperature. And the very inter interesting point is ninety percent of grape variety is uh, is a Merlot. So from the Merlot, they make Rosso red, Bianco white, and Rosato rose even sparkling. So in, in, uh, in Ticino, every white, red, sparkling, rosé is almost all is made by mellow. <laughs> they have a 10% uh, you know, produce of the American grapes, but those American grapes are usually used for the agrappa. This is my favorite wine in, uh, in the Ticino, Il Matirolo, Ban San Giacomo, produced by Ban San Giacomo. This is a Melo Bianco. They also produce the, you know, sparkling red and rose. Taste is really fresh and clean, but has a hint of the, uh, you know, fruit, fruitiness and, and the body. This wine is selected as the uh, one official wine in uh, Expo Milano 2015. So the, finally, the Three Lakes City, uh, Three Lakes area. 
which is located in uh, located here near the Juha Mountains and near the France. So the area has the uh, uh, winemaking uh, towns like Neuchâtel, Bilbien, and Mourdain. So it has an influence of the Juha Mountain. It has a mostly the limestone soil. That makes the, uh, also, also it has a um, muddy soil that gives power. It's, the mostly is a mixture of the uh, you know those soils, that makes a very interesting uh, combination of the taste of wine. And the red wine is only Pinot Noir is allowed, and white wine is Chasselamain, but other various interesting grapes like Pinot Gris, uh, you know Riesling, Chardonnay, uh, those kind of interesting wine. And interesting rosé wine is uh, you know will the will the perdri it's a, a red eye or bird in, in the french expression this is the wine of the will de perdri and uh, this red eye is uh, you know so imitating this this one this red wine and uh, this eye and the name come comes from here So this is actually the Wilde Petrie wine from uh, Chateau de Auvenier. Short, short maceration with the uh, you know, grape skin. And after uh, 18 or 20 hours, they took away the, all, all the skin. And only uh, you know, lightly colored wine is continued to ferment it about two or three weeks and that makes a very gentle salmon pink color rosé wine it is really aromatic and fruity has a structure of the uh, you know pinot noir it's really you know food friendly this wine you can also purchase this wine from alcohol trade trust in japan They have another lineup of wines. This is Chardonnay and Chasla, and this is the Pinot Noir. It's really it's 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 two most famous winery in Neuchâtel, Auvergne, I assume. So please visit. I you know without any appointment I visited the the vineyard you know the 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 owners is, is very kindly introduce us and uh, you know give us a tasting it's you know very super friendly winery so if you have a chance please do visit another excellent wine in Neuchâtel is the uh, Auvergne by the Domaine de la Maison Carré. So uh, so after the macellation the two or three weeks, macellation is the you know put the whole whole whole, 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 whole grapes inside and then keeps the two or three weeks. So that gives the uh, you know the color of the skin extracted. And uh, Fermentation is uh, continue with the uh, different size of the uh, bottles from 228 liter typical burgundy, you know, small barrel to 5,000 liter big barrel, old barrel. So usually the small, this, this little barrel gives some uh, taste of the uh, like oak. So you see uh, like a cedar flavor or, you know, chocolate or, you know, those kind of flavor come from the new oak barrel. 
this big big uh, barrel doesn't give the uh, doesn't add any extra one they just uh, you know maturate wine so i think this is one of the highest quality pinot noir in in switzerland this is the building of the uh, uh, Domaine Maison Carré. This is the owner of the Pelch son. And this is one of the, uh, in a barrel, this is a 1,000 liter. So he has a, you know, smaller one, like 225 liter, a bigger one, 5,000. So, and the blend afterward. So that gives the uh, complex, complexity to, to the uh, final wine. So this is the vineyard this year. As you see, uh, you know, in Switzerland, COVID-19 is, is a very severe. And about uh, 80,000 patients. It's, you know, the situation is much worse than, than Japan, you know, con considering 8 million you know, population in Switzerland. The number is pretty high, you know, in, in, in Switzerland. So the, but the weather in Switzerland this year is, is really nice. So wine grow the three weeks earlier than regular year. So, you know, vineyard, uh, you know, farmers can work on the, the vineyard, keeping a social distance. <laughs> they were busy to, to take care of the, uh, you know, the, the vines. But the uh, sad thing is the, uh, they cannot ship the wines to the restaurants or the, uh, you know, supermarkets or, you know, the consumers. So some vineyards deliver the, the wines by themselves to each customers to, you know, let, let the customers enjoy. So but now the you know restaurants started to open, so I think um, Swiss customers can enjoy the excellent Swiss wines a little by little at the restaurants and the, and the supermarkets. So this is almost all my side today. Swiss wine is excellent to drink anywhere in the world. But it tastes better if you drink together with the Swiss food, <laughs> such as a fondue and the raclette. Those cheese cuisine does go well with the chasla. <laughs> chasla is a very noble, pure, and fresh with a little bit less acidity. It is also good fit with, with the uh, Japanese cuisine with, with umami from uh, dashi or bonito and kombu, seaweed. But Swiss wine is best match with the, uh, these beautiful scenery. I have shown you, uh, you know, the beautiful scenery of Swiss wine or Swiss sightseeing places. So I really want to, you know, enjoy, uh, you know, these th Swiss wine with this beautiful scenery in Switzerland. So once the, you know, situation of COVID becomes better, please do visit Switzerland and, uh, enjoy the Swiss wine. At the time, I will definitely won't come back to the Swiss winery. So if we have a time, let's, let's go together and in, enjoy the excellent Swiss wine. Thank you very much for today. Master-san, thank you very much. You definitely have studied the Swiss wine seen and the wines themselves very well. But we have definitely heard more than we expected because uh, we are just before eight o'clock now. So we have to make it a little bit short. But before we do anything at all to wines, I would like to basically come by to everybody with uh, Syrah from Vinigma 
And Sierra is also, as you mentioned, um, very popular in the Rhine Valley or in, in the Rhone Valley rather. So this is a very typical Swiss wine of a very high quality, which actually improves also through the global warming. Usually that is of course mentioned as a negative, but for the Swiss red wines, it is actually positive. So today, if you consider Switzerland in the center of Europe with a geographic divide from the Alps and maybe the Jurassic Mountains, uh, which is basically Kalki from Geneva to the north west of Switzerland, you have a great variety of wines. So I believe that the Swiss wines offer a great opportunity to taste different worlds of wines not usually enjoyed in other flatter areas of the world. So with this, I would like to, first of all, thank you very much for your presentation. Also, keep enjoying the Swiss wines. And also, if you have a question or so, please uh, let me pass it on again to Lilo to handle the questions and everything. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining in. And please stay with us for the Q&A. Thank you. So this is me again. Matsudasana, thank you very much for this very insightful presentation. Um, as I've been bombarding you with all the questions already during the presentation, you actually integrated them uh, very well already in, in your presentation. There is just uh, one more thing that I might be interesting to elaborate a little bit more. Do you maybe have like, just one or two tips of your favorite wines that you mentioned how with what Japanese dish they go well you mentioned that uh, about the dashi and everything but maybe just one dish that would be a good match for one of your favorite wines definitely you know sashimi but uh, not the, uh, you know, the, the tuna or, you know, those kind of uh, big flavor with the red beet fish. As the uh, Anderson introduced the, you know, my hometown is Kanazawa. In the region, uh, they are um, white fish. I mean, how do you say, uh, I forgot the English name, but uh, Local fish is 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 not that uh, you know red, it's it's a white fish, so those kind of white fish has a very gentle flavor, mm -hmm. so and not just put the soy sauce on it. It's it's, it's a very um, seaweed kombu. Eat together with seaweed kombu, and that gives the uh, very fit with the uh, Swiss very sensitive Shasla wine. That's my one of the my favorite way of you know enjoying Swiss wine and the uh, my you know local food. Maybe and it's it's difficult to to understand for you guys, but <laughs> we will definitely give it a try once we get the yeah. chance. To and definitely in Switzerland, in Switzerland, uh, filet de perche is is a perfect match. You see, trout. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this one we have to, yes this one i tasted that this one is near the uh, in the neuchatel lake braski braski du poisson this restaurant offered the best of filet de perche and uh, this is very good fit with the uh, chasla <laughs> looks uh, very, nice. very nice i hope very nice. everyone yes. is already getting hungry looking at the pictures <laughs> that's right that's right so yeah, um, thank you very much for your uh, very insightful speech. A little token of appreciation is actually on its way to you, well, to the embassy, so hopefully you will find it there. And I will just give back to uh, Andre for the few closing remarks. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Matsuda-san, thank you very much for your elaborate um, webinar here. I'm sure we have learned a lot. Um, all I can say is a big thank you and also for everybody to stay in there and also make notes hopefully and have a glass of wine with it and if not then you have seen some addresses 
where you can really find good wines. Usually people say, well, Swiss wines, I don't know where to buy it. Now here you have the chance to go into it and give it a try. And I'm sure you will be delighted to find something, an alternative to what you usually drink. It's definitely an exciting alternative of a very Swiss and a very limited, what you would say here, a very limited uh, product, which is not just readily available. Which means, of course, the rarer it gets, the more popular it gets. And there it means there is value to it. Enjoy. Have a nice evening and thank you everybody for joining in and sharing this learning curve together. Thank you.